Welcome to the midweek prayer time. Let me begin by reading scripture for this morning from Psalm 119. Verse 73. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me because I've hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let, I pray, your merciful kindness, kindness be for my comfort, according to your word. Let your tender mercies come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, for they treated me wrongfully with falsehood. But I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me those who know your testimonies, and let my heart be blameless regarding your statutes. Let's pray. Father, thank you for another time to devote to time with you, another time to devote our attention to the spiritual, the eternal. Thank you for the privilege of doing it. Thank you for the capacity to seek out spiritual truth, to seek your face, <clears throat> to be in your presence. And once again, we note the fact that you're always faithful in who you are. We're not always faithful. We're thankful that you are available to us in this prayer time. Direct our thoughts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The sermon reminder, sermon summary, is 2 Corinthians 4, 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power would be upon God and not us. So the Apostle Paul makes it very clear, God uses earthen vessels, clay pots, that's what we are. We are fragile containers of the treasure, which we saw the treasure is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3, verse 3, the light of the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God. The gospel itself, the good news about who Jesus is and about what he did, what he does, what he can do, who he can be in someone's life and the wonderful release from bondage and sin and guilt that comes through Christ. That message, that good news, because that's what the word gospel means, good news. That good news is a treasure, and it's in us. And we talked about the responsibility of having that treasure we carry it with us. It's in us. It's with us. And we should let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. We have this treasure. As far as announcements, uh, I want to continue to Keep prayer for the Dawsons, Ryan and Susan, Beck and Benji on their trip. Wonderful opportunity they have to get away from where they were. And they were in a real intense uh, COVID lockdown 
in the part of the world they were in. Very intense, very limited movement. So what a blessing to drive around this country, seeing family, being blessed by that time. And they're headed back here so that the first Sunday in August, August 1, Ryan will share briefly in both services a somewhat of a testimony of what's going on for them on the first Sunday in August. And then they'll be headed out back. And then, they're, then they plan next late spring of 2022, they'll be scheduled for a, an extended time off here in America at the middle of 2022. So keep praying for their safety. And uh, this Sunday, special uh, opportunity, a special event, is what I wanted to say. The uh, singing duet of Blake and Jenna Bowlerjack. Certainly quality of just unrivaled quality. Uh, hope we look forward and anticipate an anointing of their ministry with us. So as I said before, anytime we have special guests, something really special, uh, set of standalone event, that's an easy opportunity to invite people to be part of that, to be part of it. So that's next, well, no, this Sunday, this Sunday, July 25. And they'll be in both services in the morning to give us a flavor of what they do and to be present in the service. What a blessing. And then that night at 6, full concert, their ministry God has called them to. And uh, Century Kids, a great children's camp, in, up in, on Lake Livingston, the north part in Trinity. That's going to be start the next Monday, the 26th, and uh, be praying for Jordan as she continues to prepare final details. All the parents, some of these parents are sending their children off without them to a camp for the very first time. Huge deal, huge deal. Lots of preparation, so be in prayer for that, that camp. So I want to read from a, uh, <clears throat> a book in, uh, entitled Fresh Encounter. It's by Henry Blackaby. Henry Blackaby, Fresh Encounter. I want to read a couple of paragraphs. Before I read that, let me go ahead and give the prayer needs, because after I read this, I want to move into prayer. The one prayer need for sure is Billy Joy Suffling, who is on hospice at Matagorda Rehab. Not the hospital, but Matagorda, the nursing home, rehab center. So Norma, her sister, Norma McDonald, really burdened, and it's a difficult time for her to see her sister declining. And then the, the daughter and son of Billy Joy, Bill and Mary, let's pray for them. But uh, pray for God's timing on Billy Joy's life. At this, she's very close to God calling her home. And the other needs that you know of, People have mentioned, lifted, asked for prayer. Uh, you see the prayer chain, email. <clears throat> so let's remember them. So reading from Fresh Encounter, Henry Blackaby. Many Christians and churches are in despair over the spiritual and moral condition of our nation and churches. In many places, the world seems to be growing darker and darker. Wickedness is increasing rapidly. 
perversions are multiplying, actions at once were criminal or becoming fashionable. Moral values seem to have disappeared as people do what is right in their own eyes. People, organizations, and even governments actively are opposing Christians, and few seem to fear God anymore. Our nation is, a, is at a point of moral and spiritual crisis like Isaiah's. We may be surprisingly close to God's judgment on our nation. Now, before I finish reading, I want to remind myself and tell you when Henry Blackaby wrote this book. 1996, he's writing these words. 1996. Christians should not be surprised by the spiritual darkness around us. That's a strong statement. We should not be surprised. That is all it can be. Darkness is dark. The greater problem is not with the darkness. The problem is with the light. When light shines, it dispels darkness. We face a growing spiritual darkness in our land because the light is not shining brightly. Now, that's not the fault of the gospel. The gospel is the light. Of course, you know where the fault is. Jesus said that his disciples are the light of the world. When the light of Christ in us is dimmed by the sins and cares of the world, darkness increases. When God's people are clean vessels, the light displayed causes darkness to flee. Darkness itself cannot overcome light. Light overcomes darkness. So there's a reminder from a great spiritual leader in our last many decades, Henry Black, could be reminding us not to be surprised that darkness is around us. And we need to concentrate on ourselves being the light and walking in the light, being in good fellowship with God personally. Let's do pray. Father, we thank you again for the prayer time. We pray for those who have asked us to pray for them. Remind us, let it be on our hearts, on our minds in the next hours and days. Let us be faithful intercessors, interceding for people who reach out and ask for prayer. We pray for Billy Joy. We thank you for her life and her ministry. And as she faces heaven's door, be with the family. And Father, we trust your timing is perfect. Lord, our nation, we're, I know that myself and many of us have just grown so comfortable with so many signs of your presence in our lives over our lifetime, even in our culture, even in our society and in the, the uh, halls of justice, the places of leadership and government. But to, now it's different. Lord, we pray that we would not be stum stumbling or paralyzed or overcome with fear, but that we would walk in the power of the light of the gospel of the glory of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God. And let our light so shine that people would see Jesus. Father, we pray for this Sunday to be a great Sunday. We pray for people who have been invited to come, that just to experience your presence among us. 
And let us be a church that reaches out and touches lives, that people would experience you through this congregation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.